Hey, how are you today? This is Josh Patrick, and you're at Cracking the Cash Flow Code. And my guest today is Shannon Susco from Metronome University, and she's going to talk about metronomics with us. I'm not really sure what metronomics is, but I'm sure by the end of the 20 minutes or so we spent together, I'm going to have a really good idea what met metronomics is. So are you, and I bet you'll be able to use it in your life. So let's bring Shannon on. Hey, Shannon, how are you today? Good. Thanks, Josh. It's great to be here. That's, uh, I'm glad to, I'm glad to have you here today. It's really kind of fun and, uh, you're a good sport for me to be a little bit late and getting started. So I appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's all good. We are in a really, uh, I find a tighter world because we're in a virtual world and I'm, I'm happy always to talk about metronomics. Okay. So I, I'm curious, what is metronomics? So metronomics is a system that's grown up over the last 25 years, uh, built through experience, uh, taking in the best and the you know, oldest, newest thought business thought leaders of our time and plugging it into one system, one backbone system for any company. It works for any size company, small, medium, large, extra large, enterprise. And metronomics itself will help leaders save time, time's our scarcest resource, as well as you know the inverse effect, save time but increase value. Increase your cash flow, increase the time you have for your life. And it's really about a balancing act of, of your team, your business, and your life. And we know that's the biggest thing we all struggle with when we're growing a business. So that all sounds like a lot really good stuff, but here's my question. How do you do it? Yeah, I love it. So metronomics is all about the how, because we actually, when we are learning this and many leaders out there, we always read the what. The thought leaders tell us the what. They've done research. They tell us what happened. They tell us, here's a, here's a tool. But when and how do you use it? So metronomics laid out and, and what we did and uh, my background is I grew up two global financial services companies um, and sold them less than six years apart. And someone said, like, how did you do that? And I said, you know, we had this system. And when I retired over 10 years ago, uh, people asked me if I would share the system. So I said, of course, I'll share the system. The system is metronomics. And it does guide at each and every leader. It will meet the team where they are and it will allow them to actually pick it up quarter over quarter, year over year, to actually get you to where you need to be. And it's about the how. It will lay out the cultural system, the cohesive system, and the um, human system, which sounds not very human because we're calling that. And it will also put, and that's all the soft edge. It'll also balance out the hard edge, the strategy, the execution, and the cash. And most organizations focus on the hard edge and not balance out the soft edge. And then the last key piece that we learned of this in the how is to coach it out, which is the coach cascade system. And if we as leaders, as we know, become coaches and coach it out through and cascade it through our organization, it becomes easier to grow a company. It becomes faster to grow a company. And, you know, quite honestly, the biggest thing that people have in growing any company and really buying into a strategy is confidence. And so it will grow your confidence in your plan. So the hard edge, yes, we all have it. The soft edge, lots of people focus on it, but it's really about balancing it together, zippering it up as we target out to what we call a three-year highly achievable goal. Okay, so we call that what you're talking about the two sides of business. There's the personal side and there's the economic side. And I think we're talking about the same thing because that's what our, my first book is called The Sustainable Business. Yeah. And there's four pieces to that. And it sounds similar to what you're doing. Um, and I like the general outline of what you're talking about. But can you get a little more specific? Sure. Um, and give me an example of what metronomics would be and how it would work in the real world. Yeah. So especially metronomics, the blue, especially, especially the blue collar world, because that's what yeah, we're talking to yeah. is blue collar subcontractors. Right. So in in that world and how would that work? You know, in that world, there's there's three things um, that are involved when we talk about metronomics. 
One is the system itself, and that's the backbone of the system and creating the, the cadence of actually what you're gonna do every day, every week, every month, every quarter. And it's very, it's prescriptive, I'm not gonna lie. There's lots of, you know, you have to have the willingness and desire to wanna do this, right? And there must be a reason, we know that. The, the second part is, is that with the size of your team, uh, and in business, a business team, it's it's hard to actually find the playing field and find all the team members on the playing field. And so we've created a way that you can actually drive behavioral accountability to the plan on the playing field. And we do this virtually, and there's lots of different ways to do it virtually. Um, and we have a you know we have a suggested way, but it, it we really need team accountability and that behavioral accountability. The third thing that we believe in is uh, a coach every I apologize for that that's okay three things so we know the most successful teams out there any teams they have a system they have a playing field a scoreboard that's transparent and they have a coach and metronomics actually brings all three things together and when uh, a team will use this in their day, week, month, quarter, year, time is what we all have and we all get to utilize. Uh, the system will actually play out step by step. And so if you're gonna like, you go, Shannon, so what? You know, everyone talks about a system and business and a coach and a team and all this stuff. The biggest thing is, is that it's easy to, to get started. It's easy to get started. You just have to commit to getting started. And the commitment comes with just getting your team together and working out your plan, working out your plan. And you can start with it so simply. And you can do it in a day, you can do it in two days, we recommend it. But once you actually start, and, and we know, we know Josh, many teams have plans and plans don't get executed, right? Many teams have the greatest plans ever, they don't get executed. And many uh, teams are executing 99% of their time without a plan. And so the idea behind this is to you know, build a plan with your team, your coach, and within the system. And the system is as simple as um, laying out and laying out your strategy, laying out your execution plan, laying out your cash plan. Because that's one of the biggest things that unlocked this for me and my teams. We started out as a small team and grew to a global company. But the thing that unlocked it was focusing in on cash and not profit. And that might totally you know, blow people's mind. Why would you focus in on cash? No, actually, I, get, I have to int interrupt you there because I learned that the hard way. <laughs> Me um, too. <laughs> I focused on profit and ran out of cash. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, really, really big deal. You know, this is something I've said for about 35 years now since I figured out why I ran out of cash is that public companies' profit is important. Private companies do the best they can to kill profit at the end of the year because they don't want to pay yeah. taxes. Yeah. But they have to pay attention to cash. You know, yeah. we, we all know the um, statistics that something like 80% of businesses don't make it to five years that are startups. Right. And I would submit the reason that the vast majority of them go out of business isn't because they have a bad business, they've got a bad idea, or they've got a bad anything. They just run out of cash and they have no place yeah. to go to get more cash. Yeah. Yeah. And so the core, the core of this system, you'll love this. And one of my favorite sayings is, you know, you can, I want everyone to put cash in a wheelbarrow and walk away with it because you cannot put profit in a wheelbarrow and walk away with it, right? You have to put, you got to put cash in the bank to actually sustain your business, you know, impact whatever you're trying to impact. And so the core of the system is forecasting cash first. It's it's so obvious, but it's not what we actually learned in business school. It's not what most businesses are doing every day. And we have to work our plan to the forecast of cash in you know, your monthly cash forecast. And we would roll out 36 months of cash forecasting and then work our way up. And we work our way all the way up and people go, what do you mean you work your way up? We'll work our way all the way up to forecasting, then forecasting the things that flow through your business. We call them widgets. That sometimes confuses people. Widgets are the things that team members can control. 
right? It could be hours in a day. It could be manufacturing something. It could be ordering something. It could be POs you're pushing across the table, invoices that are coming in and out. These are widgets. These are, these are things you control. And the only way you can actually grow your business and actually put cash in the bank is understanding the relationship between the functional areas of your business of what things flow through. And then obviously what does it, you know, what are the expenses to that and what are you going to generate over that? It does, so, you know, at the end of the day it's profit, but we got to put cash in the bank. So, well, profit's one of the, one of the drivers of cash, but not the only one. Um, so it sounds like, an integral part of what you guys do is dashboards. Am I correct in that? It is dashboards, but it's related to, and I, I love that you say that, there's a transparent scoreboard that would actually relate the cash to what we call the widgets, the things that flow through the business. Because if we're going to actually, we know you've probably worked in organizations too, where you've been given your number for the quarter. Here's your number, Josh, off, off you go, get it done. And you have no connection to that number whatsoever. You have no idea, it has no relationship to what you're doing. So the idea behind this is yes, to have transparent scoreboards that everybody can see, no doubt. Uh, but the big thing is, is that what's measured on that scoreboard must be uh, owned by the team members in the organization. It doesn't matter if it's one team member, two, 10, whatever, but what you do every day. And what, you know, one of my clients, is an um, organization that builds um, uh, net zero homes, net zero homes. And they've been using this probably about six years now. And they have this the system fully cascaded from the scoreboard for the organization all the way through out to the sites and everybody on the sites. So everyone knows what their score is every day. And that score is the only thing, it's not dollars, it's only what they can control and it must be connected to the company score, which then, of course, is going to be connected to the lagging fiscal results, including cash. But that's what that so tie together allows us to make better, faster decisions. So I have a question for you. Um, is Scrum part of those things that you teach your people mm -hmm. to do? So I, uh, by uh, my experience and my education, I grew up as a software developer before Scrum wow. existed, that really <laughs> dates me, uh, yes. and before Agile <laughs> Methods, that dates yeah. me. But we created, you know, I led a lot of software teams and large software projects at that time, and the goal was always never to miss the deadline, always to keep, you know, what we had to deliver aligned to, you know, the budget and the plan and how we are going to get paid, because the only way we're going to make money. Right. And doing that and keeping that together. And so we created, you know, part of this methodology at that time. Then as our company grew, I went from leading the software development uh, team to running the company. Right. Chief operating officer and then COO, uh, CEO. And I just brought the same methods, you know, along with the greatest thought leaders that had information out there at that time to actually start putting this in place. Because the only way we win is if we tie the things that matter, the things people can own, right, each and every day to the plan. There's no other way to win. It, it's true for business and it's true for sport, right? That's the only way you win if you can break it down and connect what matters at the end of the day. And so the, the agile methodology, the scrum methodology is absolutely part of this. And it actually works. I'm, I don't know an organization that doesn't work for it. as an organization. And we know it works for many, many technology teams. Well, we, we have, you know, we've been adapting scrum for our subcontractors now for about three or four years. I actually went down to Jeff Sutherland's course and mm, became awesome. a scrum master. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't say that I know what I'm doing. I just sort of say, let's let's use some basic stuff. Yeah. And we see incredible results with our, the people that we work with who do that. And the reason is, is because you're, you're doing basically all the things that you're talking about, which is yeah. having individual stuff that people can control. Right. Right. You know, that, yeah, that, that's the beauty of it. And and, you know, interestingly enough, I like metronomics. It's this big word. It's made up of three words is how we got it there. But metronomics is, you know, I joke about it, but it's a human system. It based, it's based on human behavior. So is Scrum. 
So is any agile methodology. And that's why actually it works. As long as we connect to what we're doing and stay focused on it and have it connect to a bigger purpose and you know bigger goals, it actually, humanly, you will actually pull it through as a team. And you know, metronomics, there's there's three, you know, the word, you know, people think, oh, you know, it came from Freakonomics or whatever the other book titles is, but it actually came from three things. One is the metronome. The metronome represents the fierce and humble leader, right? That will commit and create a system and put a cadence in place, a disciplined cadence. Economics comes from the relationship of time to organizational value and it's team value as well. And there's that, you know, that very, very important relationship. And then the third thing is the word metric. And metric in our world equals a widget and a widget equals the things that a team member can own. So it's the way to connect the team side of your business to the hard edge of your business. Because we all know that it's so easy to focus on the hard edge, but if we can't connect it back to the team, and we can't connect that to cash. You've had that experience. I've had that experience. You run out of money <laughs> and you can't make the impact you want. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So um, are you in favor or do you encourage your clients who are using metronomics to use bonuses for their, their people? So it depends. I'm going to say that out loud. It depends. Um, definitely. Um, I'll take it from two sides. So one side of it is uh, what we do encourage is uh, hiring A players. And an A player is, you know, someone who will consistently exceed expectations and is not motivated by uh, dollars, let's say bonus dollars compensation. They're motivated by doing a really great job and they're motivated by being measured. Uh, usually one of the top things in their minds is peer recognition. Does that mean they don't want to be recognized and we don't want to have a bonus pool? Some of my clients actually do have a quarterly uh, performance program, but it's based off the widgets that they deliver balanced to the, the cash funds they put into their bonus pool. It's the only way it gets triggered, right? It must, they, they could do all the widgets, but if they gave them away, it didn't trigger what needs to be. So it has to be balanced. And other organizations I work with uh, just, you know, decided to pay really well. They pay at the top, top percentile. And they just decided if we're going to we'll pay well, we'll get, you know, the best uh, team members and we will, you know, put it out that way. So we that that's two extremes. And we've seen everything in between. And I haven't seen any difference myself on the speed of growth of an organization based on the company that pays a really great base salary and program compared to a team that's, you know, has no cap bonus program. I just want to say that out loud. I'm going to see no difference in the rate of growth in my companies. Yeah, and that probably is true. And I think it really becomes down, you know, Peter Drucker used to talk about, in, in uh, W. Edwards Deming talked about this a lot. We, we were Deming people in 1982. We put our first TQM program in our food service company. And that was before Scrum and before Lean and before Six Sigma. Yeah, yeah. And all that stuff. I mean, it was basically total quality management and demonstrating right, yeah. points. <laughs> so, That's all there was. Yes. And and if you actually look at what all these, you know, um, process improvement things are, they're really just based on Deming's 14 points. Right. And in there, right. it's about it's about managers managing. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. about, you know. Money is table stakes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I, I do like company-wide bonuses, and I like it based on company-wide profits with yeah. open book management. Right. And oh, the yes. I, the, the reason I like that is that, yes, widgets make a ton of sense for what you control, but if we don't see the bigger picture at the same time, right. it, it really it. becomes – So it, it took me about 10 years to learn this. They used to call me Mr. Bonus in the food service business. I had bonuses for everything. And we did the widget bonus. And the problem yeah. with the widget bonus was one section of the company could blow the doors off while the rest yeah. of the company was losing money. 
Right, right. And so we did widgets. I mean, the, when we think of widgets, lots of people just think it's one, you know, it's what you make, it's what you do, it's what you sell. But there's widgets all the way through and there's company widgets. But the biggest thing is it's got to be balanced, right? So it's got to be balanced to uh, the, the lagging, the fiscal side. And the widgets are really the front end. And there's two reasons. One, you can you can get it out there and know what your score is, but you can also know that you may be off before you're off, before you close out the month. And the earlier we know the score and through the widgets in the month, the better, right? And in the week, and, and in my businesses, they were SaaS businesses. So if we missed some new users or new clients we were putting on our platform in the very first day of a month, we, we're, we're blowing our year, <laughs> actually, because we're expecting that subscription over and over and over again. And so it actually taught us great discipline to look at that at a daily level. And with the clients we work with and the system promotes, you know, getting it to a daily level, just to, you know, A players want to be measured and they want other they want others to know how they're doing and they want that peer recognition. Hence why, you know, we call them huddles. And we we took that from Rockefeller Habits back in the day, but same idea as the scrum. And they just want to be able to share that. The other thing I want to say is that this system is being used out there by upwards of 90 coaches worldwide. Use this system. It's on, I think, every co uh, continent. It's used in many languages. And the thing is, why? It's because it's really human. And humans want that connection back, not only to win, but they want the connection back to themselves. And, and I think the biggest thing that leaders are excited about is it gives back time in their life. The system well is prescriptive. It actually lays it out time, like every 90 days, it lays out what you should do next. And it sounds sort of ridiculous because you're going, how can that company over there be the same as our company over here and that company over there? But it's all really human, right? And it will meet your team where they are to get you to whatever your goal is. I call it the business Olympics. Whatever you set as your business Olympics, it's set up to give you that program to get you there. You know, Shannon, I just love the fact that you keep talking about people because I, I have to tell you that um, when I first got into the, this business, in the advice business, and I left the vending business, I don't yeah. have people walk in my door and say, I need to sell my business. And it was, that was really a people thing was they were burned out because they were doing the yeah. same thing. It weren't very good at for years and years and years and years. And if we could change what they did, we changed their happiness, which was all around yeah. personal sustainability, which is why we have the two sides right. of sustainability. Um, you're a fascinating person, and I think we're going to have you back on at some point again, <laughs> because there's lots more I want to delve into. But unfortunately, we are out of time. Well, and, thank you. Um, I'm going to bet that people are going to die to find you. So how do they do that? Well, they can go to metronomeunited.com and there's so many ways to connect there. You can also find me on LinkedIn. I love actually all the people who have been reaching out. This is my third book and it's brought together the two systems of the other book and we put up them all together and shared it. And so everyone's been reaching out over the last three months. It's been pretty exciting and really fun to connect and learn from everyone. So thank you. Cool. Now, I've got two things I want you to do. The first is I ask every single episode. I've been doing this for about six and a half years now. So for six and a half years, I've been asking you to do this. And we're going to ask again today. Please go to wherever you're listening to this podcast and leave us an honest rating and review. It's really important to help people find us. The second thing is, well, about three weeks ago, my second book made it out into the wild. It's a continuation of my first book. It's still a business parable. I like stories. Most people I work with like stories. And it's a story with our friends at the Aardvark family. I happen to be selling the book for half price on my website. So if you want to get it for half price, you can get it for, I don't know how long it's going to be doing this for, but I'm going to do it for a while. <laughs> and you can find it pretty easily. Just go www.sustainable, I mean, www.saleareadycompany.com. That's www.saleready.com. And you'll learn what a family transition looks like and how you create a sale-ready company, even if you have no interest in selling, which almost everybody I talk to sell, tells me. So this is Josh Patrick. We're with Shannon Susco. You're at Cracking the Cash Flow Code. 
Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope to see you back here really soon.